Well, After I put this card down defense <laughs> position, I shall end my turn. You ever say I shall end my turn whenever you duel? I used to at one point. I it, shall it, end it, my like, turn. It like, How I, old were you? I was 10. 10? Oh, yeah, you get what's now at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are going to be watching and reacting to an old Yu-Gi-Oh! DVD from 2004. The School of Duel. Have you ever heard of it? I've never heard of it before. It's an unofficial, not Konami-made DVD to teach how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! First one is beginner duelist. Okay. The second one is advanced duelist. So I thought it was only fitting for the master duelist DVD to bring in our local master duelist at home. <laughs> We're gonna watch this okay. and you're gonna tell me if these are actual like legitimate Yu-Gi-Oh! advice gameplay things or okay. if this is all completely fraudulent. Fair warning, it's a little cringy. So, you I'm know. I'm pretty sure it's on a DVD. First, I would like to say it's been a very long time since I've even watched the DVD. So we are already- Yeah, we're <laughs> breaking taking a, a trip you know I mean? back in time here. I have, to give, I have like a small DVD collection at the house of things I just didn't want to get rid of. Do you have a sword? Maybe. I think that was it. You definitely have a sword. This is like these gems. You can do all of this. That's why I'm breakdancing. Hey, Imperial Order, RIP. You'll find out. Oh, okay. You'll find out. Okay. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. This School of Duel, Learn Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duelist video will demonstrate some of the more master techniques, rules, and concepts that you'll need to know when dueling at the tournament level. You think you're ready to learn oh, no, that's this from, uh, Charlie's Yes, Angels. Professor Duel. Okay. He seems so young. Let's review where we are. You have a monster in face-up defense position and a card face down in the spell and trap card zone. And I have a card face down in the spell and trap card zone and an injection fairy lily in face-up attack position. Right, in your turn. <laughs> I will draw a card and enter my main phase one. This gets him so nervous. Spear now I enter my battle phase and my spear dragon attacks your spear dragon. Ouch, that's not good for me. It's my spear dragon with zero defense points. That is the risk of using <laughs> no, he's a monster reading off the teleprompter. defend itself. Professor, isn't there another effect of spear dragon? Why, yes, Ethan. The effect of spear dragon says it has to <laughs> go to the defense course. position. I attack your life points directly with injection fairy lily. Do you wish to continue? No, thanks. I'm now in the damage <laughs> step of my battle phase. That's a good answer. Since you I just start saying that whenever someone wants to chain something. Yeah, yeah. You have anything to chain? No thanks. No thanks. So I do that and attack you with 3400 ATK. Do you wish to continue? Yes, I do. I discard Kribo from my hand to activate its effect. Wow, that was an excellent move. I'm glad I didn't see Kribo that is a Yeah, I thought you were going to lose. <laughs> I got a You're definitely on your way to becoming a master duelist. Who's this? This is my dad. Just remember, Time to go. we are not done. <laughs> I mean, or, given like, that this is the expert or the master uh, duelist section, I think this is the perfect place to put it. Because uh, again, I think the damage step is probably the hardest part of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. It Actually, I remember they simplified the damage step a they while have, back. I remember in years past, it was like 10 sub steps or yeah. something crazy like that. I actually keep a flow chart on my phone every now and then, like just so I can show people. Because it's really hard to just teach you about, like just like, trying to just explain it with words. Thanks to your training, I understand all the rules, but I'm still losing a lot of duels. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. No Kill issue. Relatable. Strategy will allow you to see into the future ahead of your opponents and plan your moves accordingly. So pigs that is sounds basically. hard, Professor. Yeah. But I'm willing to work hard again and learn. You have Mystical Space Typhoon face down in the Spell and Trap Guard Zone, and I have Gemini Elf in face up attack position, Axe of Despair equipped to Gemini Elf, and a card face down on the Spell and Trap Guard Zone. I activate Mystical Space Typhoon and destroy your face down card. I activate Imperial Order in response and change Jesus your Christ. Mystical Space Typhoon. Do you wish to continue? No. Okay, then. <laughs> no. You resolve the so chain hurt. from the... So my Imperial Order negates the activation and effect of spell cards. Your That's mystical a pretty cool space visual typhoon for is negated, showing chains. and its effect doesn't go through. So my Imperial Order is safe. Plus, now that I have Imperial Order on the field, neither of us can activate any spell cards, which means that you can't use that change of heart in your hand which you were about to play. Then, in my standby phase, I choose not to pay for Imperial Order. So it gets destroyed and... Do you remember that? Uh-huh. Do you it remember that? It was optional. It was that and it was mirror wall. Yes. We used to Let use those explain. like crazy. In this case, oh, so he's saying how 
would destroy my imperial order. Okay, there we go. Okay, we that's the, that's the lesson. That's the lesson got there. Okay, so what, so what were you gonna say? Well, look, the, the lesson made no yeah, sense. So you, yeah, we got we got. Yeah, because I was gonna say I was like, what's the point of the lesson? Like it's just like he used MST, the other guy used imperial order, and it's like, oh well, it negates it. Yeah, like, I guess it's a lesson, but right, it's like yeah, I don't really. Maybe this is this is ahead. cool. Yeah, so. We're if he uses change part. of heart, yeah, it's okay. Uh, since he, he since he mentioned like the spells be three and stuff like that, I wish he would have like done like a counter trap or something like that. I get the whole imperial yeah. order thing. Uh, I agree. But, like after that, after that chain goes off, whatever, and you explain that, we go to another one where it's like you know, because obviously he went to the change of heart imperial order, mm -hmm. uh, MSC thing. But if you go change of heart and then magic jammer, you can't you can't do that. And that's yeah. like that's what the lesson should have like. Guy pretty much always. Blind MST is bad. Damn yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. Uh, even today and yeah, back then, yeah, just yeah, blindly MST. MST and, and I'll do it every now and then, but it's bad. And yeah. I said, I said this is bad, but I'm gonna do it. Like I know it's yeah. bad. Did you try to match me today? What the hell happened here, bro? No, I didn't. <laughs> Did you I try didn't. to match me today. Like, <laughs> you had the a red, red, blue, was, and yeah, yellow what, sweater, what but happened? we just not on purpose, by the way, anybody. In case <laughs> you're wondering. Crazy. That's crazy. Go ahead. This is the lesson I need right here, baby. Yeah, deck construction. This is gonna be the big one. Professor Duel. Just gotta help me, you just, please, sir. You put me down at once. That. I've been going crazy with all these cards all around my house, and me? my daughter still says her deck isn't good enough. What cards does she have? Okay, you one she day. She has five monster reborn. If it's not you today. Genzos, maybe three or four summon skull, a few dragons with blue eyes. A few dragons with blue eyes. Check. My word, does she keep all her cards in that? Some uh -huh. of them look bent and out of shape. She should take care of those cards. She'll want some of these cards. He wants to offend me. What? Put away for her collection. My grandma gave her this box. Well, that's her deck. There that sounds like that skit we did where the deck's there. in a rubber band. Yeah, three hundred and forty-two to be exact. Dude, this is before she the max. Uh, the box of cards yeah, the, yeah, that's actually the true. Deck this deck would side. have been when you could have as many cards as, as you many wanted. Cards you wanted to. Let's see if they tell them how many cards. Okay. They Most good duelists try to keep it around that forty-card mark. Yeah. Okay. Good tip. If you have too many. You will usually not draw the cards you need at the time mm. that you need them. Forty? Ha! Huh, that's easy. She's got forty cards. It's two spell and trap cards. So in a forty. Card one monster for every spell slash trap. Okay, is this a, is this a good tip? One monster card for every one <clears throat> spell slash trap. So <laughs> I want to. I actually want to hear your take on this. <laughs> so funny enough, uh, back when I used to bake my decks when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh, that was my ratio. It was twenty monsters. 20 uh spells and traps and that was the 20 spells and traps in the chamber but it couldn't exceed or uh, yeah or, it had or, to be or, like kind of a one-to-one -one. yeah that's how i did it and now granted as i got better i realized that wasn't always the case but funny enough i had a lot of success with the decks that i did build back in the day but as it currently stands that is not yeah it's a, i think in, in modern day Yu-Gi-Oh, that's it's not it's just it's anything given the time period do you think this was like a good actually no like in 2004 was that a good advice it, it's something that i did but in looking at decks that were better uh no because like, they're just different strategies. We had, we had things like Disaster Dragon, we had Teledad, things like that. There, you were not going uh, even. There's no even symmetry in those type of decks. Like something just more important than others. I don't like there, that. There, there were some decks that were specifically mixed like just two things out, like the giant rats, you know, things like that. Yeah. The, uh, whatever the bear, the, the mother grizzlies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you had decks that were like like Warrior Toolbox or like Chaos and things like that. And so I still think those decks did not run like 20 months. Well, some did. Because Reasoning Gate, you know, Reasoning Gate was just big monsters and spells, but uh, yeah, uh, things like that. But it really just depends on the deck. I don't think the 2010 10 or 2020 thing is it was viable, it should have been viable. It could work, it though, could work. Yeah, we were in a different time back then. But. These two things are actually probably more advice than you will ever learn watching yeah. the show. My very whatever, first so. deck was 75 cards, mine was probably it, a little bit more than that. Any of so. you know, I need everything just sounded so good, I just put everything in my deck. Some cards are just too powerful and are restricted to just one per deck. Hmm. And those cards are called limited. Hmm. Other cards are restricted to two per so They are actually talking about a band list in here. Semi limited. And you should know that the yeah, limits include your side deck, too. It is. Just keep in mind that if you have a side deck, you must always have 15 cards in it. When I first read about the side deck in the official playbook as a kid, I thought it was literally just the second deck you got to have. You just got to have two decks, and you just put the side deck over here, mm -hmm. and we would also draw from our side deck, I'm like, whenever we wanted deck. to. Yeah, like, did you use side decks when you were, like, first playing, or was it, no? No, first playing, it was like, I didn't use side decks, and I'd always, like, run into a matchup that I wasn't, it wasn't favorable for me, so it just went to my main deck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Game one, I'm going to draw it. Yeah, you'll, you'll just draw it, it'll be fine. Some of my younger duelists like to put the newest, most powerful cards in their decks without having any cards to support them. Me. Just because a card is good or shiny 
doesn't mean it belongs in your deck. I had to learn that one. Right. Yeah, wait, wait. How, how'd you learn that? What? Because uh, if it was shiny, I assumed it was good. So I found a way to put it in there. Oh, this card. Like, what's it? Do you remember the, the, the Diffusion Wave most can't do whatever? Oh, my God. Yeah, Diffusion Wave most sucks. It was a secret, secret rare, right? It yeah. sucked. But it, it read good. And I like the effect of it. Yeah. So I found a way to force it and, like, Dark Magician stuff into my deck. And just kind of put it all in and then yeah, pray it works. It work. it was... You know what's interesting about old school Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, kind of compared to now? Nowadays, like, a lot of cards have a lot of text. I feel like back in the old days, usually the less text, the better. Mm -hmm. Like all the all the effects that were just like destroy all your opponent's monsters. Like that's the best card. But right. then the ones that said like diffuse wave motion. Mm -hmm. If you have a level seven spellcaster yeah, monster yeah, under weapon. this circumstance, you pay this much and it can do this one thing. It's like yeah, that's really yeah. super specific. It looked cool, but it wasn't worth it. But we still tried it. The more different types of strategies you have in your deck, the less effective each of them will be. So stay focused. That makes hmm. sense. It kind of makes sense. Kind of makes Different sense. strategies might work against each other. My daughter has one of these cards. <laughs> How might she modify her deck to support it? Well, for starters, she should probably not load up her deck with trap cards if she wanted to disable yeah, the Genzo. The thing about the Genzo and talking about the shiny cards and stuff too. So I remember, um, I was I was one of the people that was all, again there was no side deck for me back in the day, so I was always trying to prepare for everything. I ran a Warrior Toolbox deck, mm -hmm. but my uh, tribute monsters were different. I ran the free the matchless general. Oh god! I, but I ran. I, I also ran Genzo. Yeah. Spell counselor. Uh, <laughs> Dark ruler Hades. <laughs> so you were running the the preventative. Yes. Anything, like, if, if I tribute something, something is going to stop something. That's yeah. the whole point of it. I was breaking these staples. Let's talk about cards that help you draw more cards. These staples. Activate pot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Of course. Got to run this. From your deck. It started Pot off strong, Paul. It's crazy this was a rare card, back in the day. Mm -hmm. I used it a rare. I remember. Pull it. Support cards more quickly. Like, you know, like today, this would be like secret. Yeah. It's a secret. Yeah, yeah. It's a prosperity or a like extravagant. The CR already printed like for. For the same reason, Graceful Charity is a staple card, too. Yeah. That card built in a pot of green. I don't care. Nobody tell me. I agree. I. Three cards. Okay. So you also agree Graceful Charity is like literally a better card than Way more broken. 100%. 100%. Way I more. totally agree. People are always like, oh, like, could, you know, one of these cards come back or whatever. I think. Pot of Greed would be more balanced than Graceful, Graceful Charity, Charity in this game. And, like, honestly, imagine like Snake Eye with Graceful Charity or like Tear. Uh, Tear, Dark World, anything yep. that just wants to discard for the free because it can. Like, oh, this card is just a great by card effect. Okay. Yeah, this is literally like, the more OP. It's also crazy that there's like a Yu Gi Oh! where like both of these cards are just, you just play them both. Just, mm -hmm. and my deck's got three of each. <laughs> yes. And yeah, no big deal. I want that world. That's even better than Pot of Greed. Could be. Yeah, you also have I agree. Discard two cards to the graveyard. We don't care. Yeah, we don't care. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the discard. We want to. So staple cards help me draw more cards, right? Not all of them. Right. There are lots of different types <laughs> looks of so... staple cards. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> cards help clear the field. Reikeki destroys all of your opponent's monsters solid. on the field. When He's your solid. opponent has several monsters ready to attack on his next turn. Or you're about to attack and want to clear your opponent's field. I got a Geki Use Geki Geki to destroy them really? all and give yourself an advantage. In 2024. Would that Dark oh, Hole card also be a stable? <laughs> even though it destroys your own monster too? Yes, definitely. You can only have one Regeki in your deck. So Dark Hole mm, is not a anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Especially when you have no monsters of your own. Now we get to have three and it's still only an average card. Nobody can destroy use a bunch of my opponent's monsters, but leave mine alone. Mirror Force is a trap card you can activate only when your opponent attacks. It's okay. a great card to activate right before an attack to help ensure that your opponent won't counter your attack with Mirror Force or some other trap or spell card. Agreed. But be careful because it... You know, some people are saying that this card could come off the ban list right, right now. Today. So while I can yes see why, no. there's so many traps and spells and traps that have effects when they're destroyed that I'm afraid. You think it maybe wouldn't be... I mean, I, I, I'm not against it coming off. Make very clear. You know, yeah. Come off. I just know that I bet money it'll be a part of an FTK. I bet it will be. An Between FTK. this or True Nade, this is like this, more tolerable. I, yeah, than this is way more tolerable than True Nade. Yeah, yeah I, I would gladly take this over True Nade. True Nade is, is up there in the realm of like, oh, do we want Maxi back or not? Because yeah, yeah, True Nade's kind of kind of busted. Just, what happens if some of her monsters end up in the graveyard? Why is she gone here? For the rest of the duel? I, I'm about to ask about to ask that question. What about that reborn the monster card I found earlier? You mean Monster Reborn, and yes, it's a staple card. <laughs> it allows you to reborn move a monster, monster from the That's what they called it in the anime. They call it Reborn the Monster. I don't know why they called it that. Attack or 
defense position. Satan? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, destroy what? My opponent. You can revive a monster and then tribute that monster to bring out your own level five or six monster. You can also use Snatch Steel or Change he of Heart. He reminds me of O.J. Simpson. Change of what? Change of Heart. <laughs> with this small <laughs> card, you can gain control I'm sorry, of I don't have to do anything to do with it. It's around to O.J. Simpson. The effect of that card is that your opponent gains 1,000... You know what's really sad about this? So Change of Heart's unbanned and Snatch Steel's unbanned. And like brain control got that shitty errata where like it just oh, sucks. Summons, yeah. And it's funny because originally brain control was seen as the more balanced change of heart because it at least like had a life point cost. And now they nerfed that. Yeah. So it's unplayable. Right. And change of heart's back. And snatch steals back. And no one even plays those. Can you see why all these cards are so important to have in your deck? Yes, I sure can, Professor Duel. Altogether, they can really Duel. help me control my own destiny in a duel. <laughs> Indeed they do, my friend. For example... You could use a dust tornado to destroy one of your opponent's spell or trap cards, but you'd be using one of your own cards to destroy only one of your opponent's cards. Oh, is so they teaching about party advantage? It would be better for you to use a card like Harpy's Feather Duster to destroy all of your opponent's spell and trap cards at once. I call that band. card economy. When one card can eliminate card any economy. of your opponent's good, cards. Good, good phrase. And that makes Harpy's Feather Duster a better all-around card than Dust Tornado. So, card economy, good lesson? Bad? What are we thinking? Um, it, it's a good topic. I don't think it's it. Probably good topic? Cool. It's a great topic. I think card economy is a great topic. It's, it's part of, like, card economy goes right up there with strategy for me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, know, I know strategies of decks, but then immediately, like, card economy matters next. Like, am I doing too much to break boards? Am I doing too much to make boards? Things like that. I think it's a good topic to, to touch on. Could have touched on it more, but again, this is 2004. So. How do you feel like they maybe could have done like a different... Like I, I do agree that a different example might have been like something a little more... Like this might be too advanced for this, but like the whole like when you set your MST and like, like they MST it and then you MST like one of their cards, kind of like that exchange. And so that's what I think. I'm talking along the lines of that or whatever. Where it's yeah. More interactive. Yeah, I think um, that could show like how you kind of create your own card, card advantage. Card, yeah. Whereas like because, I mean, Heavy Storm and Raigeki and, like, those examples are... They're obviously, like, it's, like, an easy example. Right. But I don't so, think that it's... It doesn't teach you to, like, you don't teach make your cards to like, do those that. Those cards don't teach you card coming at all. They just say, I'll blow stuff up, and, and, and you just have the advantage at that point. It really doesn't teach you anything. Even so after did have a I'm doing, I still keep my decks with Why is he holding that? <laughs> just I just to stick to the one, one, out. one trap or spell card for every monster box in my deck. deck Paul. That's good, Ethan. These are not hard and fast. That's rules, a but God. Are there some deck designs that are more effective than others? Yes, there are quite a few. So no, many, I, would disagree. I can't describe them all. But among the more popular are <laughs> beatdown decks, which try to win the duel by attacking your opponent with strong and efficient monsters, often equipped with strong equip cards. Then there is a burner deck, which does its a best to deck. inflict direct damage rather than battle damage to win the duel. A depletion deck tries to win the duel by causing your Maybe opponent your opinion to have a to draw, <laughs> otherwise known as decking out. Maybe. And there is one more okay. that every duelist has heard of. <clears throat> you must be talking about the forbidden one. That's right, Ethan. Exodia. Oh. This deck causes an automatic win. Uh, Beatdown decks were huge back yeah, then. Yeah, that's oh. like 90... Five percent of what you'll encounter. Dragons, warriors, yeah, whatever. Uh, burn, burn, uh, burn decks were huge back then too. Chain burn was huge. Uh, depletion de mill decks, depletion decks are called mill decks. We had, a decks. We, had a, we had a few of those back then. I don't. I remember what was that one that everybody would empty jar, empty jar, which was one of my favorite decks uh, yeah. back then for sure. Um, and I won quite a bit with it, but that deck was just uh, it was just troll. I, I feel like take all of seriously. these, these like kind of, I've noticed that these, we'll call them gimmick decks or lack of a better term. Gimmick. They've really kind of fallen off in like 2000. Like in the in the mm. modern modern age, it just feels like you literally can't. Not you cannot win with them. Absolutely, like you were saying, somebody you know. Uh, somebody got like just top four forward, with like uh, a burn chain burn, and actually thing. a buddy of mine won an OTS. I want to say the OTS originals with a uh, volcanic uh, FTK. Yeah, so it's like it's really <coughs> doable. Like it's doable. It just feels like it's uh, it's, it feels like these decks have really fallen off more. Oh, for sure. Hey, this is your deck. You played this. Uh, my old warrior beat I down. played something. I tell you, they would. And after I put this card down, defense <laughs> position, I shall end my turn. I'll draw. You say I shall end my turn whenever you duel. I shall end my turn. I used to at one point. I it, shall it, end it, my like, turn. It caught on because like 
How old I, were you? I was a teen. Ten? No, no, I, I wasn't teen. I was older. Oh, yeah, you get what's now at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> I would have been 10. Yeah, or something. oh, God. How, how do you know? I'm 28. So I, when Yu Gi Oh came out, I'd have oh. been. You like, like six? six. Yeah, like, yeah six. like six or Something whatever. Something like that, like six. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about how old I was. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> But yes, uh, I, I I did say I actually in my time I said it. It was, a, it was a, I didn't have an accent with it, but I did say it and I stopped. <laughs> Why'd you stop? Because yeah, why? Turn of the century. <laughs> Basically, I, and I end my turn. I attack your defense position, monster, with my summon. Very good. Just hey, for a bit. What's wrong? Still good. Professor What's wrong? I appreciate your helping me with my training, but it just doesn't seem like I can win with this deck. It's good, she? Well, Emily, yeah. what kind of deck do you want to have? I want to win with... with... style. Yes, that's it. Well-dressed monsters with high ATK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so funny hearing them say ATK. Like, have you ever in your life called it ATK? No. I've never... Like, everybody in this video, they're just like, I want monsters with high ATK, so that way I can beat over my mo opponent's monsters with low DEF. Bro, so before I even, like, when I even first like, look, started looking at, like, trading card games, I immediately knew that ATK meant attack. Like, I never, yeah, I never, never, I never thought brain, there would be a reason. Like, ATK and DEF, I, I immediately knew attack and defense, even though I didn't know how to play the game. So. My guess is that it's just because, like, they're trying to be extremely official here yeah. and, like, very legit, but... It doesn't say attack on the card. ATK. Oh. I wonder if they're going to give her, like, a... They're gonna typecast her with like a heartbeat. Deck. That's what I'm to say. I, I, that's why I appreciate the duelists, the women duelists that we have now, because you know they they play what they want to play and, and they play everything. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, a lot of times women duelists only played things like you just get typecast. Like, so it's gonna got be cute typecast, girl. Right, and, it, and it's probably trash. And it's <laughs> well, I don't know about well dressed, but I can certainly help you build a deck to beat your opponents without too much fuss. That sounds grand, Professor. I have a bunch of cards here in my purse. Oh, uh, don't bother. <laughs> oh, don't buy in the purse. Don't shit, right. Please, pull, just just pull keep that away. Little stack of just help. These young ladies are Gemini Elf, a 1900 ATK monster. That's a really ATK good card that back high? then. It most certainly is a tribute monster. Actually, it's, hard to Emily, get. it's a level yeah. four monster and requires There's a no secret, tribute. I think. Yeah. That's why it is such a great card for your deck. There are many Some of us use Dark Elf for all the monsters to be found. You know what's gonna be interesting? Secret rares used to be like two pa two per set. Like mm -hmm. a set had two secrets. Yeah. And that's it. And because yeah, I, I remember with Gemini Elf, it was like them and like one other card. That's it. So you got like two secret rares. And they're so elegantly dressed too. I thought you'd like that. Are you sure there's no cards like teacup fairies or spell card like let's be friends? How about injection fairy lily? This suddenly got so like misogynistic. <laughs> it's got so misogynistic. I'm not a I love how it just it's, it went from like oh you know I just want to learn how to like how play, play and, and maybe find some cars that are dressed well and then it just went to no she's a girl a they girl. must be cute. Yeah. Why? Are, are there some teacup fairies or some? Reason flowers. We're sorry, yay. ladies. We're sorry One of my for favorite all cards. Flowers, it has yay. No ATK. I know all about how <laughs> I can pay two thousand life points to increase its ATK by three thousand during the damage step of a battle. Were you listening in when I was talking to young Ethan some years ago? Eastra? Why would she be listening to me? Never. But I would well, be all ears be. to hear about some more monsters for my deck. That's right, Emily, but first look at cards that help with your theme. We have focused a bit on a warrior theme, but we could just as easily have built a deck with a spellcaster theme, a dragon theme. This kind of reminds me of like a, a criticism that I've heard people talk about with like this really old school kind of pre-goat Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. Pretty much every deck really was just the same. Mm -hmm. Like every, like, because there'd be no reason. Like, they say, like, oh, you could build like a spellcaster or a dragon deck, but actually in that time period, like, you couldn't. You there wasn't enough, like, spellcaster or dragon. Like, if you were playing Yu Gi Oh!, you were playing a Marauding Captain, like, Exiled Force, yeah, Goblin yeah, Attack yeah. Force. Like, that was your deck. So, you know, you, you, there were some decks that played, like, you know, they played Tribe Infecting Virus, you played, like, the, uh, the, well, the Thunder Dragons, like the strategies that I yeah. ran stuff like that, but there wasn't a lot of strategy variety. So <laughs> this is a lesson. <laughs> yeah, this. I've just about solved the equation. Why does he like Weevil? Gold. Why does he got the Weevil going on? Though? He does have the Weevil hair. Well, it's hard to find people who challenge me anymore. I've beaten everyone here except huh? you, Professor Duel. But you ain't beat me. <laughs> uh, could you speak up a little bit, Ryan? These Madagascar lemmers are trying to take my hat. 
I'm just saying that I need to tell you. He's in Madagascar. Just tell me what would be the first things to think about when designing an Exodia deck. Have you ever actually played an Exodia deck? Like in a like a tournament kind of competitive setting? Uh, I'm sorry, personally? Yeah. No, I've never taken one. I've played against one. I've never taken one. Yeah. Why not? You don't care for... It just didn't do enough. It was all 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 the Exodia decks, especially back then, was just glass candy. So I mean, even today, I guess they kind of still are. True. Yes. Yeah, so either you get it or you don't. Yeah, I never liked Exodia because I feel like it was too. Uh, like it doesn't. It's not. You're not really like playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, you're just kind of like drawing cards. Plus, once people find out what you're playing. Yeah, yeah the moment the side deck comes in, it's over. Never again. Like, yeah. yeah. Your opponent could have a hundred thousand life points, and with Exodia in your leaves? hand. Yeah, I. I remember sleeves back in the day. Like it was hard to find Yu-Gi-Oh size sleeves. It was always kind of just the the, sand, the, the standard, standard size. Like, they were big and chunky like that. And it, so much space in between, and your cards yeah. sliding around. And they get dirty and like peel easily. I, I can, I don't know what brand this is, but like we've all seen that mm -hmm. the sleeve the where they, the backs peel and it, yeah. yeah. Also, cards like Swords of Revenge. This is gonna be the most annoying kid in the playground. And Messenger of Peace will help oh, yeah. you stall your opponent's monsters from attacking you. Like the cards I use in my stall deck. By using cards that stop my opponent from in attacking my stall deck. Around, you admit that proudly, I have more time Ryan, to get my Loki stall decks were like the talk of the town on the playground. Like people loved playing a stall deck. Your deck. There was never a point to it. I guess it was to like, like, deck you out. Uh, yeah, or just, just wait. <laughs> you, if you can't stop what I'm doing, you just, you just draw cards until you just lose. Like, why were we so infatuated with that as kids? Because we were, we were allowed to, 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 to get the, the, the rewards with less work. Whoa. Exodia sounds like a powerful card combination, and it makes for a powerful deck. Sounds bricky to me. It sure is a lot of information to download, but I think I can remember. All I need to do is ask myself what I want in a deck, and I'll find an answer in researching the cards. That's right, Ryan. I mean, he's got a good mentality towards it. Like, I'm sure one you know, day you could win a tournament. Research the cards, figure out what you want to put in there. Or 12. Thanks, Professor Duel. It's not the winning that's important. It's the challenge of the game. And don't forget. You agree with that? Is it no, what's I more important, that. winning or challenge? I don't listen to blasphemy. The game? I don't listen to blasphemy. Now, to be fair, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's the challenge of the game, but I do just enjoy the game, whether I'm winning or not. But we always enjoy it more if we're winning. Yeah. Uh, while there's obviously some improvement that could be made on that video, given how we are as dual is now, I do like how it was kind of slow paced and didn't it, it, it slow paced, slow paced, yeah. and it wasn't moving too fast or overcrowding with information for the players that were learning or, or returning. Yeah, I mean, I think like some of the concepts are good. Like I like that they covered card economy. Like I think that is a good. Oh yeah. While their method of teaching it wasn't perfect, I think that even bringing up the idea is really good. Oh for sure. The fact that they bring up like chaining to something like Imperial Order is kind of a good advanced concept. Like, you know, don't just blind MST. The damage step is always going to be one I feel like should always be touched on. But yeah. Okay, I mean, so overall, give it a rating. One to ten is this. It's 2004 <laughs> and you are. Am, 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 I, am I rating it as 2004? Yeah, you're, you're in 2004. I'm in 2004 and I'm rating Your mom, your dad, someone got you this. You're like, you know, you're a kid you're trying to learn Yu Gi Oh! How useful was this for you? Uh, if, if we're being realistic, 2004, I'll probably respectfully give it like a six out of ten. Okay. Respectfully. I, I was gonna say about the same yeah. six, but maybe a seven if not you want to be. Not gonna you want to be not generous? Gonna yeah, no, maybe I'm, not. I'm being, I'm being generous with six. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Now you got forty eight hours to respond. Make your own DVD. We ready for Make it. Make your own. You go. go. Diss track. <laughs> the boss in your court, Konami. I don't think Konami today would even make like any. I mean, they made that two player starter deck. It didn't really help. So. Anywho, hopefully you guys enjoyed this fun uh, jump back in time. You learned something. <laughs> if you did, drop a like. We've reacted to all three parts of this video now, so you can check them out. Fast turn. turn.